we are in first year laboratory of physics department of IIT Kharagpur. So, today I will demonstrate one experiment that is basically uh, oscillation and we will study the oscillation. Uh, so, oscillation uh, you know this spring mass system oscillate, then pendulum simple pendulum, compound pendulum uh, oscillate right. So, this oscillation basically you see free oscillation, then damped oscillation, then forced oscillation under damp. So, this mainly these three types of these three types of oscillation. Okay. So, what is the free oscillation? Just without any damping, without any external uh, force, if if uh, if uh, spring mass system or pendulum oscillates, then we tell it is a free oscillation. And uh, now under damping also if it oscillates then we tell this the damped oscillation. Damped oscillation without external uh, force and with external force then we tell this forced oscillation. Okay. So, today I will demonstrate these three types of oscillation in a single um, instrument this called basically false pendulum this false pendulum. So, this the this the experimental setup of false pendulums. So, I will come to this uh, this setup. So, before that let me let me tell you about the uh, theory of this uh, of this experiment. So, you know this for free oscillation equation of motion is d 2 x by d t square d 2 x by d t square plus omega 0 square x equal to 0. So, this is a free oscillation there is no damping uh, term here. Now, for damped oscillation this additional term is here. So, this damp is basically proportional to the voltage uh, velocity. So, and this beta is basically is the damping constant. Okay. So, plus 2 beta d x by d t is added with this one. So, then equal to 0. So, then it is free uh, oscillation uh, force oscillation sorry damped oscillation without any external force that is 0. If any external force is applied then this external force this basically uh, f uh, as a function of function of t basically. Okay. So, then this is the equation of motion for forced oscillation. Okay. So, this x can be displacement or it can be angle phi. Okay. So, in this experiment this basically change of angle we will see uh, this will, ch will change uh, uh, the angle not is the linear displacement it is the angle. So, x can be x or or, or or this phi and this external force is a uh, is a periodic force is given. So, this f t is equal to f 0 cos omega t. So, this is the form of external applied force. Okay. So, so this is the standard equation of motion of oscillators free oscillators then under damping then uh, then under external force right then under external force uh, these three uh, types of oscillation we express uh, by three equation of motion. So, so for free oscillation so for free oscillation uh, from this equation you can see this frequency is omega 0 square frequency is omega 0 square. Okay. So, omega 0 is the basically natural frequency of this of the oscillator and uh, yes. So, uh, 
in case of damped oscillation what is the frequency of the oscillator. So, that you can so for damped oscillator oscillation. So, this phi t or x t so here I would prefer to write phi t because in this present case is the angle change. So, phi t the solution general solution of this equation uh, of motion differential equation of motion uh, is phi as a function of t equal to phi 0 e to the power minus beta t cos omega t plus delta ok. Where phi 0 is phi bar 1 plus b beta square by omega square ok this to the power half square root of this basically. And so, this is the this is the this is the phi 0 and e to the power minus beta there is exponential term is there exponential term is there ok. Uh, what is this phi bar phi bar equal to basically initially at t equal to 0 uh, we are we are just displaced we are, we are just changing the angle initial angle starting angle ok at time t equal to 0 and that time it is at rest and then just we will release it. So, that is amplitude that is the amplitude is a uh, is phi bar uh, this delta is basically this phase delta is phase 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 yes. So, that is tan inverse minus beta by uh, w. So, if you solve this differential equation you will get. So, here important thing is this this uh, these two part one is under damped condition one is the what is the frequency of this of this oscillator uh, damped oscillator. So, this is a frequency omega equal to square root angular frequency of course, it is the square square root of omega 0 square minus beta square ok. So, beta is the damping constant and omega 0 is the natural frequency. So, to get it to get it one has to find out beta ok. If you find out beta then you can get this omega the uh, damped frequency of damped oscillator and also also how amplitude changes with the with the uh, with time. So, in this solution if you see so, this part is basically amplitude. So, amplitude will decay exponentially. So, amplitude will decay exponentially. So, this is this amplitude phi this we have plotted amplitude ok amplitude variation with time. So, it is it is it is the cosine function it is a cosine function. So, its amplitude is this is amplitude now decreasing amplitude is decreasing ok. So, uh, that is also we want to study how amplitude is decreasing and from this amplitude variation we can find out the logarithmic decrement that is defined by ln natural log logarithm of phi n by phi n plus 1 means uh, uh, this ratio of successive amplitude of the uh, of the oscillator. So, any two successive amplitude you can take. So, uh, logarithmic of this ratio is basically lambda and this lambda equal to beta t. So, that you can find out from this uh, here itself because this is phi n this is phi n and uh, yes. So, uh, from there e to the e is there. So, that will come as a log and it will be beta t ok. So, if you can find out omega then you will get the time period t or if you find out t then you will find out this omega. And uh, so, from this amplitude variation you can get this this value lambda value. So, lambda you will measure from here you will get from here and t you will get from um, t will measure also t will measure time period will measure. So, we can find out this beta from this relation. So, if you find out beta yeah um, if you find out beta 
from this relation you can find out omega 0 or if you know the omega 0 and beta then you can find out omega whatever. So, this, uh, this is the uh, interesting part of the of this uh, damped oscillation here we can see this damping of the oscillation and this damping this basically is a exponential decay. So, that we want to study and then another part is uh, force oscillation. So, differential form of force oscillation you have seen the general solution of this force oscillation is phi t equal to phi a phi t equal to phi a cos omega a t minus alpha where omega a is the frequency of the applied force omega a is the frequency of the applied force. Okay. So, uh, that force we applied f 0 f t equal to f 0 I think cos cos omega a t. Uh, so, the solution is this where this is the applied applied frequency uh, frequency of the force and phi a this is the amplitude. So, phi a is f 0 square root of omega 0 square minus omega a square whole square plus 4 beta square omega a square and this tan alpha or alpha equal to tan inverse of this one. Okay. So, here so basically uh, here we will study in this case we will study the resonance because this our damped oscillator it has it has frequency omega. Now, I have applied force having the frequency omega a. Now, if I change the omega a, so when uh, so when this omega a is close to the value of omega omega this frequency of the uh, damped oscillator. So, then there will be resonance. So, there will be resonance. So, that resonance frequency will measure. So, this resonance frequency is basically omega resonance is uh, is uh, square root of omega 0 square minus 2 beta square that is equal to omega square because omega square was omega 0 square minus beta square. Okay. Uh, so, uh, basically omega resonance we can write square root of omega square minus beta square. Okay. So, this is the basically uh, basic theory of the uh, oscillation free oscillation, then damped oscillation, then force oscillation. Okay. So, this is the basic uh, I think we have studied in class 12 this type of oscillation. So, so let us come to the our to study this oscillation we will use this full, uh, full pendulum as I told. So, uh, what is full pendulum? What is full pendulum? So, how we are getting, how we are applying, how we are applying uh, damping, how we are applying external uh, external uh, force in this in this setup. So, Foltz pendulum is basically the torsional pendulum with option of applying damping via eddy current and external periodic force. Okay. So, this is the arrangement we tell Foltz pendulum where we can demonstrate free oscillation, damped oscillation and force oscillation. Okay. So, uh, how we apply damping? So, damping we apply via eddy current and uh, external periodic force we have which we have option to apply external periodic force. So, so, using this one, this pendulum will demonstrate, will basically determine the natural frequency of the pendulum, will determine damping constant of the pendulum oscillation and we will find out the, we will study the resonance of the pendulum under different damping condition. Okay. So, uh, I think this term may be new to you, this eddy current. What is eddy current? Eddy current is a basically a localized induced 
localized current induced in a conductor induced in a conductor by varying a magnetic field. Okay. If a conductor is moving in a magnetic field or magnetic field is changing and there if there any conductor is there then a current is induced localized current is induced in the conductor. Okay. So, that current is called eddy current. Now, when eddy current will will flow eddy current will flow in the in the in the conductor then again it will generate magnetic field and that magnetic field basically uh, direction will be such that direction of the current induced current will be such that the this this uh, magnetic field produced by the eddy current will oppose the original magnetic field okay so that's a that's a that's a uh, Faraday's law, Faraday's uh, law of induction, right? So basically, so thus we are opposing the motion of the uh, we are opposing the motion of the conductor, okay, in a magnetic field, okay. So so uh, so when a conductor is in motion in a magnetic field, then there will be induced current which is called eddy current. Due to eddy current there will be uh, magnetic field which oppose the original magnetic field. So, thus conductor will uh, feel resistance. Okay. So, that is thus uh, it is basically giving the damping uh, to the motion of the conductor. Okay. So, thus acts as a damping of motion. So, uh, so let me show you. Let me show you the. Uh, okay, before that, let me uh, just tell the working formula, just in 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 a uh, concise form. What is the working formula for this experiment? So for phi oscillation, omega zero equal to basically two pi by t. So if I measure t, so I have to measure t basically. So, in this case beta equal to 0. So, this uh, this motion will follow this phi t equal to phi 0 cos omega 0 t. Okay. So, it is the is the uh, cos variation of the of the phi of the phi. Okay. So, with time this there will not be any 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 uh, change of this amplitude means yes amplitude. Okay. So, it remains all the time it remains constant same amplitude and then for damped oscillation this uh, this motion of the oscillator is phi t equal to this amplitude part this uh, you see now amplitude will decay okay, and its its frequency is omega omega equal to 2 pi by t. So, this is the time period we have to find out then we can find out this uh, this uh, omega and then uh, I know omega 0, I know omega 0, I know omega, okay, then you can calculate also beta from here. Uh, uh, of course, omega 0 equal to this from here you can write this relation also. Now, amplitude variation we will study, amplitude variation we will study and from there we will find out log decrement okay. and force oscillation. So, this is the motion of the force oscillation. So, in this case we will find out the resonance uh, frequency omega resonance. Okay. So, experimentally we can find out we can also calculate okay. we can also calculate and also we will find out the uh, uh, amplitude at resonance amplitude at resonance. So, it is the relation is like this. So, you can calculate also experimentally you can find out. Okay. So, let me describe now the our setup. Uh, so, so this is the whole pendulum. This is the whole pendulum. What is there? Here you see. Uh, just if I is basically torsional pendulum. There is a spring here. You know, there is a spring here. So this spring is basically giving restoring force on this on this wheel on this wheel. 
so it is it is oscillating it is the free oscillation it is just simply free oscillation you can see this amplitude is in this side it is 14.8 uh, uh, and in this case the other side it is around 16. So, it is the it is it is very, but it is free oscillation it is not completely free because there are some air resistance uh, when it is in motion. So, some external resistance is there, but it is a very small. Okay. So, this is the free oscillation. Uh, so, so, without applying any damping, without any applying applying any damping. So, this I will take as a free oscillation. Uh, yes, it is free oscillation. So, I can find out the time period for this free oscillation. So, I have I have I have uh, this uh, uh, stopwatch. Okay. So, uh, I will I will take time for 20, 20 uh, oscillation or 30 oscillation. So, uh, I have to say start okay. 1, 2, 3. So, you know how to take because uh, in case of other experiment like compound pendulum that I have uh, we have seen how to take this uh, time for, for, for few number of oscillation and then you can calculate. Uh, so, total time divided by this number of oscillation. So, that will be time period for this free oscillation. Okay. So, now uh, we will apply damping. So, we will apply different damping and then for each damping we will find out the we will find out the time period. Okay. So, for applying damping here you can see we have a unit. Okay. So, let me show you here, here this wheel is is in motion between a magnet, between a electromagnet, this is the electromagnet. Okay. So, we are passing current uh, to this electromagnet, we are passing current to the electromagnet from, from here, we are passing current to the electromagnet from here. Okay. So, this AC current, this is the AC current, so here this is a rectifier. So, from this rectifier uh, uh, from this to end current you see we have connected a uh, ammeter, we have connected the ammeter. So, current is going current through this is current is going here in electromagnet and coming out from the other end red one, red part this one. Okay. So, circuit is closed, circuit is closed. So, how much current we are applying? Okay. So, uh, magnetic field will be proportional to that one, right? Magnetic field is it proportional uh, with current? Whatever, uh, magnetic field have yes, it is proportional. Uh, in case of electromagnet, it's a proportional. So your current, so current will flow through the through the through the coil of the electromagnet, and then it will produce magnetic field. And in this magnetic field, so between these two pole piece, between these two pole piece, this this the wheel is rotating. So, basically this is the metal, metal copper is made of copper metal. So, now metal conductor, so now conductor is in motion in a magnetic field. So, there will be eddy current, eddy current on this, on this, uh, on this uh, conductor, on this wheel and due to this eddy current uh, as I mentioned. So, there will be damping, there will be damping. Okay. So, this damping that uh, basically we are giving in terms of current here I have option to give this you see now I will uh, I put here at 4 means I have applied 4, four volt here I have option to apply for 2 volt 4 6 8 up to up to I think 15 volt here up to 15 volt and maximum current this unit can give uh, 5 ampere. So, now here you see I will just note down the current because here damping is related with the current. So, this current I have to note down this is I think 2.6 around 2.6 not 2 point uh, 0 0.26 uh, yes this is 0 0.21 0 0.1 
point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4. So, this is uh, 0 0.26. So, I will note down the damping current is 0 0.26 and for this damping again now I have to find out time period okay? as well as I have to find out the uh, amplitude. So, let us find out first time period. So, I will take uh, again just displace it. Okay. Now, I will start the watch. Now, I will start the watch. Okay. So, start 1, 2, 3, etcetera, etcetera. So, you uh, find out the time period for damping. So, then I will change to the another damping. So, I will put at, uh, at 2 or 6. Okay. So, for 3 damping we will do the experiment. So, just I showed you one. So, for you take out this knob, you take out this knob and put it as a 2. So, now you see current is point, uh, uh, point 0 0.06 okay. and for this again I have to take time period and then I can put 4 and then I can put at 6 at 6. So, at 6 this current is 0 0.44, 0 0.4. Okay. So, so, for this 3 current damping current we will do experiment, but I will show just only one that is for uh, uh, this middle one. So, that is for middle one. Okay. So, this is the arrangement for applying damping to this oscillator. Now, under this uh, damping condition we will find out the time period. Okay. So, when you uh, after finding out the time period, so now then we will uh, we'll, we'll study the amplitude variation with time. So, what I will do amplitude I will uh, I will displace it initially whatever I displace that is basically phi bar as I showed in uh, working formula phi bar. Okay. So, that I will note down. Now, for each time period t then 0 time then t then 2 t t is uh, time period then 3 t means if I start from here. So, I will take this reading then coming back I will take reading. So, that is at time t equal to capital T then again I will take 2 t. Okay. So, so, this way first I will take reading then I will take reading uh, again I will do the same way starting here then I will take the opposite side reading. Okay. So, that is basically at time t equal to t by 2 then again coming back at time t equal to 3 t by 2 5 t by 2. So, I will get so uh, uh, at a time it is difficult to take this reading in both side. So, that is how we break it first we will take one side then we will take the another side. So, now uh, I have now, uh, now uh, amplitude now I have amplitude at time t at time 0 then t by 2 t 3 t by 2 2 t. So, I have data now. So, then we will plot. So, then we will find out basically the oscillatory yes. So, I think if I showed you. So, then I will plot I will plot I will plot it, I will plot it this is at t equal to 0, t equal to 0, then t at t by 2, then 2 t uh, sorry t, then 3 t by 2. So, this way I will I will plot and then I will just connect it. So, then I will I will see how this amplitude is varying okay. and from there I can find out this uh, phi n and phi n plus 1 and uh, yes of course, you can. Uh, calculate this logarithmic decrement. Okay. So, uh, yes, so just let me just demonstrate one. So, starting I have taken at 18, say at 18, so I will note down this reading, then, then 16, then 14.8. So, this way I have to 
I have to take the English. So, that is a decreasing, it is a decreasing. Now, it is 9.3, now it is 7.4, now 6.8. So, this is a decreasing. So, I have to take reading. Okay. So, this is for 0 t 2 t. Now, again I will start at the same position for from 18 and I will take reading other side. Okay. So, at t by 2 this is 19, then 18, then 16.8. Okay. So, this basically t by 2, 3 t by 2, 5 t by 2. So, this uh, way we have to take reading. Okay. So, this is the damped oscillation for three damping current we will do this experiment, repeat the experiment. Then let us go for uh, force oscillation. So, we have option, we have option for force oscillation here uh, you see uh, you can see just let me stop it, let me stop it. So, I think let me let me take indicator here. So, just we have one indicator just uh, this marking now coincides with this indicator and it is at 0, it is at 0. Okay. So, I have already this damping current is given this is uh, yeah, 0 0.26 at this damping now externally I am applying force external force. So, to this wheel. Okay. So, here I have this arrangement. So, this wheel, so I will apply here you see from here I will apply A C current to the motor, this is the motor I will apply A C current and this frequency of this A C current I have option to change from here, I have option to change from here. Okay. So, uh, then this force this force amplitude of this force is decided by this by this voltage and, and current. So, that we have kept fixed maximum uh, uh, value we have given. Now, uh, only we will vary the uh, frequency of the of the applied uh, applied force okay. and and this force we have chosen basically it is a cosine force right it is a force this form this in, in is it is cosine cosine form that I have shown in theory. Okay. So, now let us uh, just apply let me on it. Okay. So, just you see it is uh, rotating. So, this is this this. So, this force now it is it is forcing this this uh, wheel, it is forcing this wheel right, it is it is coming coming from here, it is coming to this this wheel. So, this the externally we are applying force on it. Okay. Now, uh, I will uh, what I will do at different frequency, at different frequency uh, I will note down the amplitude, I will note down the amplitude. Okay. So, so, left side and right side of the 0, uh, what is the value that I will take and then basically average of that value I will take the, the amplitude for this frequency. Now, here how I will uh, calculate frequency, so I will find out the time period. What is the time period you see this is the, so I will, I will use stopwatch, I will use stopwatch to for a complete one rotation what is the time it is taking. So, I will take basically few number of rotation and collect time and then from there I will find out the time period. Okay. So, if you start your watch, if you start your watch uh, uh, yes start So, one, so this way I will collect, it is a very slow, so I will collect uh, time for uh, five, or five rotation. Okay. So, this time divided by 5 that will be give me uh, time period for this, uh, for this external force. Okay. 
Now, from there you can find out the omega a in theory whatever I have shown omega a. So, you can find out omega a. Okay. So, now for this what is the amplitude? Each side is a say 1 and the other side it is 0.6. So, average is uh, 0 0.8. So, I will note down for this time period or frequency it is the amplitude is. Now, I will just increase the amplitude. Okay. I will increase the amplitude. I think I will go slightly. Okay. Next step I have gone. Okay. Now, here again I, I will find out the I will find out the time period for this uh, for this uh, rotation okay. and corresponding uh, amplitude I will I will note down. So, this way I will vary the frequency and note down the amplitude. So, uh, then frequency versus amplitude or amplitude versus frequency gap we can plot. Then basically uh, at a particular frequency this amplitude will be maximum. So, that is a resonance condition that I will show you uh, and after resonance also we will vary the uh, vary the frequency and we will see we will guess basically we will see a uh, symmetric curve Gaussian like curve and peak will be the uh, basically uh, at resonance frequency. So, from the peak we can find out the resonance frequency if we plot this uh, amplitude versus frequency. Okay. So, let us just continuously just let me change and find out the I am increasing now I am increasing the amplitude uh, frequency of this uh, external force you see it uh, increases it is increasing okay. for each step again I have to take this reading. So, just yeah you have to take I am just uh, going towards the resonance frequency I am increasing I am increasing you see this amplitude also increased. So, I have to because this curve is like this you know. So, uh, now slight change will will this increase amplitude more you see now it is a is motion is faster. So, we have to find out time period okay. amplitude also increased. So, let me increase slowly slowly we are Yes, we are going towards the resonance. Yes, we are going towards the resonance. Now, it is decreasing. So, I cross the resonance position, resonance frequency. So, I have to go back, I have to go back. Okay. Let me again uh, increase. So, we have to wait uh, to, to get it at equilibrium uh, oscillation. Okay. So, I think I will get resonance. Okay. So, I think this is the uh, resonance condition. So, slightly you have to uh, you have to you have to adjust to get perfectly and uh, this uh, I think position for so it's changing
I stop it. So, let me let me again find out the resonance position. slowly slowly you have to move and step by step and each step you should wait now it becoming sensitive to the frequency now very slowly we should rotate, change the frequency. Wait and see whether Yes, so I think I got the resonance position. So now, what is the what is the uh, time period for this resonance condition that I have to find out? So start. Let me start. One, two, three, four. 5. So, this way take 20 oscillation rotation and this time divided by this 20 will give the resonance time period from there you can find out frequency okay. uh, uh, 2 pi by t that will be omega omega resonance and we have to note down the this amplitude in this side it is 19.4 in this side it is uh, 18 or 17.8. So, this divided by 2, this plus this divided by 2 that will be that is the average uh, uh, amplitude at resonance. So, this I will note down. So, I think uh, I will stop this experiment or let it be oscillated. So, uh, I have to note down all this data, I have to note down all this data right. I have table time period of oscillation with different damping current. Okay. So, damping current is, is a first we will take at 0 current, then current 2.26, uh, then uh, 0 0.26 or this I think it was uh, when I put here 2. So, what is the value of, uh, that uh, at that current we will take, and then second current is uh, 0 0.26 and that third current we showed this 0 0.44. Okay, for this three current including excluding the zero damping. Okay. So, we will take this reading, we will find out the time period for each case. Right. So, we will note down then amplitude versus time for different damping as I showed you for different damping. So, this damping current for, the, for a particular current. So, I will take this amplitude at 0 t equal to 0 at t equal to 0 at t 2 t 3 t I will note down here. Then other side as I told this at time t by 2 3 t by 2 uh, we have to note down. Then we can plot phi versus time graph. Okay. So, then this table frequency versus amplitude under force oscillation. So, damping for a particular damping current that I showed you for a particular damping current as I showed you there. So, here presently 0 0.26, 0 0.26 damping. So, what is the time period from here uh, we have to find out and from there we can find out uh, omega a that is frequency and corresponding uh, amplitude uh, as I told this for different for a particular damping current for different. Uh, so, we will find out time period uh, corresponding frequency and for each each frequency we will note down the amplitude and then we can plot the graph this frequency versus amplitude 
and there we will get the basically peak position uh, from there you can uh, you can find out phi resonance amplitude and also you can find out omega resonance okay and so that is observed means experimentally observed and another one estimated means using the formula you can calculate so basically result whatever the data we have taken so for different damping so we'll calculate lambda log decrement then damping constant beta then omega resonance for different damping then phi resonance for different damping and uh, you can you can from this data also you can find out the natural frequency natural frequency omega 0 equal to square root of omega square plus beta square so all data are available with you so you can find out this one okay so this is the very nice experiment where you can demonstrate all 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 types of oscillation free oscillation damped oscillation force oscillation so that's why this pendulum whole pendulum is very interesting and important okay so i think i will stop here thank you for your attention <laughs>